I'm also fascinated by what happens to the very young brain. And the reason I find it particularly fascinating and important to think about at the moment is because we know that the human brain is exquisitely, exquisitely evolved to adapt to the environment. And it follows, therefore, that if the environment is changing in an unprecedented way, then the brain will change in an unprecedented way. And what's very exciting about the human brain, people don't necessarily realise how unique and special they are. Even if you're a clone, that's to say an identical twin, you will have a unique configuration of brain cell connections because as your brain grows after birth, it grows much more than a chimp's brain will grow. So these connections have the chance to mirror, to reflect, to be shaped, to be strengthened, to every way reflect your particular unique experiences. So this is what I call the mind, the personalization of the brain through this unique configuration of brain cell connections. And what happens is first you grow up in this unconditional way, um, just saying how sweet, how fast, how cold and bright and whatever comes in, because there's nothing um, to retaliate, whatever comes in will be unconditionally accepted by your brain and it will shape and change things. But as you grow, so those pre-existing connections will form a basis for you to have an evaluative judgment about what's happening. So as things come in now, you can evaluate them and assess them against the checks and balances of the connections that are there already. And at the same time, that ongoing experience will upgrade and update the existing connection. So your brain is in this fabulous dialogue with every experience you have in the outside world. And that's what makes you so special. For 100,000 years, that we've stalked the planet. No one has a brain or rather a mind like you do. It follows, therefore, that if we place this very sensitive and vulnerable and impressionable brain into a new environment, let's say one that's only two-dimensional and one that only offers two senses, sound and vision, then we might expect some different changes. That's not to say they're going to be universally good or universally bad, but most neuroscientists will say it's a given that the brain will adapt, therefore, and change, because that's what it is evolved to do. Um, the area I like to research on here is what's happening in the brain when this goes on, and what kind of person will the next generation, what kind of people will they be?